welcome to the Crusher and the Tusher vlog presented by Bike Flights. Naturally, we're kicking it off with a little UPS store drop off. I left my van down there after Envy Grodio and flew home. So now I'm flying back to get my van from a buddy's house in Salt Lake City. And because I flew, I'm shipping a little equipment ahead uh, to save on the trouble of flying it. Bright and early, 8.15 on July 5th. We're going to pack a bike and go to the airport. Packing up all the drinks, drink mix, the gels, the recover drink. Let's see, we got to get some salt stick in there too because it's going to be hot. Bags are packed. And now I better do my dishes so Emma doesn't kill me. Hopefully, I wonder if she, sometimes she watches these. Whew. Yeah, normally I'm a little bit more organized when it's the day of for going to the airport, but yesterday was 4th of July, so I wanted to go to a party and hang out with friends instead of packing stuff, so. It's working out so far. I'll keep you, keep you updated, you'll know. Alrighty then, reunited with the van. Well, bike is together. We're out, moving the legs. So my phone died, so no more videos from that ride. Yeah, it was pretty, but it was very hot and I was very tired. My legs felt very bad. All right, we're in the we're in the boots, getting getting Norma teched. And uh, yeah, these uh, two wee rooms were made for UAE, but they wanted deeper rims. So now Caleb has the 3.4s, and they want have four fives and stuff. And I'll be racing these this weekend at Crusher, uh, obviously tubulars, and they're almost ready. Just kidding, I'm racing AG 25s with 40 millimeter getaway XBs and Kush Core. Well, it's, uh, what day is it? It's Thursday. The Thursday morning. Um, yesterday I noticed my solar wasn't working and I had a part burn out. But I woke up this morning after it rained and uh, figured my solar is working. But recently I installed this water heater, which works, and also reinforces mud flap. So, I'm already doing plumbing and other things, so why not uh, just do some electrical and fix some solar panels? Well, Boris, it's been a pleasure, my boy. I will see you again. Oh, look at his little tail. Oh, buddy. Oh, what a good buddy. Oh, what a good buddy. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, he's a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, okay, I gotta go. I gotta go to Beaver. Man. It's just Salt Lake City's geography is just crazy with the lake and what let's what's left of it and the mountains. I am this is cool. Groceries acquired. Uh, now we can hit the road down south to Beaver. Hardware store trip done. I have a nice nice splice connector. We're gonna go strip some wires, connect some things, try not to get electrocuted, make my solar panels work. I'll keep you updated. Um, if I get electrocuted or not. Sorry to all you Utahns and Salt Lake Cityans. I don't know what the word is. Um, but I do not like driving I-15 through Salt Lake City. It's a lot of lanes. And it's a lot of traffic. And everybody passes you on the right, even though you're going 80. Admittedly, I'm driving a big dumb van that can't accelerate though. So that really does exacerbate uh, the anxieties of driving in heavier traffic. I am somewhere outside of Beaver, 45 minutes away. I am tired of driving, but we go for a spin, jump in the river. Alrighty, back in my same spot from the other week while I was here pre-riding. Got a little shade, nice little meltwater creek. It is cold. Oh yeah, I'm gonna kid up. Man, these spin. gear slides and dirt bag mounts are slick. It's not slick, it's this tire that doesn't have air in it. Push core on this new tire on earlier this week but I think I was a little rough with the tire levers and might have poked some holes in my rim tape. So I'm gonna redo that tubeless rim tape when we're back and swap it for a tire that Ray Lynn Ness is bringing for me from Challenge. And uh, yeah, we'll get to play the game of is my mental health stronger than a Kush Core install? We'll find out. So far, two for two, I'm winning, um, but these have been tough battles emotionally, physically. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> Recovery's been going down. As expected, it's very hot, just under 90 degrees. So thankfully we start at 7 a.m. on Saturday. 
It'll be done before it's 90, which is nice. Um, and besides that, lots of electrolytes, lots of time in the shade. Nice cool breeze here. I'm by the creek, which is cooler too. Nice little uh, ice bath. I'm camped on the course, so Ellen and Howard stopped by, and then Sarah Sturm stopped by. The three of us, four of us had a little ice bath. So I'm gonna shave my legs in this creek because I don't care, and I'm a little, little dirty little mountain, mountain man. Now, this is an Indiana delicacy that I learned about while I went to school in there. I should be cooking dinner, but I am just in lizard mode by the creek here, eating gummy worms. Got some pasta, got some chicken meatballs, we've got some pesto. And I already demolished my salad and cleaned my bowl. And a great view too. So, great view up here. Step one, cover the solar panels with the blankets so that they can't take any charge. Yeah, I, I just can't really turn solar panels off. Because uh, they're always uh, absorbing solar and energy from the sun. And now here's our melted guy. This is what we're replacing. So we have a butt splice, a screwdriver, uh, a, I'm an, I don't know, man. Uh, cutter and stripper, wire cutter and stripper. And a cutter slash crimper. I don't remember how to do the crimping, so we'll figure that out as we go. Butt splice on, other wires stripped. We're gonna put that puppy on there. Uh, but I seem to have run out of daylight, so I guess we'll find out tomorrow if my solar works or not. All right, and now we're uh, shrink wrapping, or heat shrink wrapping this puppy together for waterproofness. Well, there we have it, folks. That light says solar. Which means we have successfully fixed the solar panels. Woo! Hoo -hoo! I am not a qualified electrician. Good morning, party people. Oh, yeah. I'm one of those one of those hand grinders now for my AeroPress. Also, I hope you're enjoying the background creak noise in all of these clips, because I am very much so enjoying it. Step one, tire and cushion are off. Now, time to redo the rim tape. Yeah, a lot of sealant underneath my rim strip, which is uh, never where you want your sealant to be on a tubeless. And to rim clarify, strip. this is this is generally all user error and not a reflection on the equipment and. Uh, techniques of my sponsor. Andy. Actually, it's not even like user error. That's just usage. Like you take tires on and off a bunch, rim strips get worn out. Oh yeah. Look at that money. Look at that first try with the floor pump, 20 minutes total, done. Another day, another bike ride. I'm rolling up this canyon again. Gonna hit my openers, 90 minutes of riding. That's about I stopped it. stopped in the shade for a minute to eat a snack and an elderly lady asked me about the race and I explained how it worked and she was very excited and offered me a soda or an ice cream. It was very, very cute. And she's gonna get up early tomorrow and watch the start. Awning is up, got a nice breeze. We got an ice cold recovery drink that I put in the fridge. Look at her go. That means plus 230 watts. The solar, solar and the van are doing a solid uh, low endurance pace. Oh, oh, oh yeah, there we go. I hope I hope you guys don't mind uh, camping and van life stuff in addition to uh, bike racing. If if you do, uh, you're you're watching the wrong vlogs at this point. I don't know what to tell you. This should be clear by now that this is also a van life vlog. It is definitely chilly, but it's like 85 degrees out, so it feels good. And yes, I do have a shower and a hot water heater in my van, but uh, this is more interesting. I have a I have a hot shower at home. Oh yeah. And I've got some temporary neighbors. Cody Cup and Logan Owen are off spinning. I thought this is a good parking spot because they saw my van. Cody and I were discussing camping in vans and Cody told me that I, I van life way harder than most people and I take that to be as a be a tremendous compliment. One of the best compliments I've ever received, probably. And he, to be clear, he meant it as a compliment, so shout out to Cody. <laughs> Rolled down to the expo, picked up some numbers, used the internet. Now I'm gonna drive back up to my little campsite, cook some dinner, and hang out and relax for this evening. Get ready to go bright and early. Got some rice going. Well, ate my salad. Got some little impossible brats. Good, clean protein, clean enough, and hella rice with a little salsa because I needed some some sauce, and it's the only sauce I had. I know it's not a culinary masterpiece, but 
this is just fuel. Y'all know I like to actually cook, and but this is not actually cooking. This is just race fuel. Well, I've decided I need more stimulation than reading. We're gonna go climb that. Well, this was extremely worth the very small amount of effort. Well, here is my aerofied number attachment. So, there we go. 500 grams of carbs, about 100 ounces of water, and a lot of caffeine. I should add, I'm carrying everything I need because there are great aid stations everything at this race, but there are no hand-ups or outside support allowed. So, to avoid stopping at aid stations, carrying all my own stuff. Um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of the rider's choice. Do they want to carry the weight and not stop? Or do they want to have to stop in multiple aid stations, multiple time, not carry hydration pack, etc. So, um, yeah, kind of your, choose your own adventure on this that This is where the CX riders take the advantage. Pinning numbers. The gravel boys aren't as used to this. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot, almost, almost forgot about my roommates. Well, it is 4.50 a.m. As you can see, the sun is not yet up, but unfortunately, I am. I don't think I have ever liked my coffee as much as I do at this exact moment. Because as I've probably mentioned, I have no service here, which I think is tremendous. Um, it's crazy when I don't have service. I just am perfectly content to do quite literally nothing. Just walk, eat, cook, read, sit in the river. Chain is lubed. Tire pressure set, 27 front, 28 rear. Well, folks, this is where I leave you. Phone staying in the car, not racing with a GoPro. So videos from of race footage will be very limited. Um, yeah, racing always comes first. Content, social media, blah, 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 always comes second. Remember that, kids. Race your bike. Like, literally, children, race your bike first. Content, like, 10th. All right, time to go suffer. I'll... See you in a few hours. All right, I've been driving long enough that I'm done pouting about my race. That was not so good. I finished 42nd. Yeah, yeah, not, not what I came for, not what I was looking for, not even close to what I'm physically capable of as an athlete and human being. Um, I, I mean, didn't really have any major problems tire pressure, bike, equipment, everything was perfect, no mechanicals, fueling was great, didn't blow up, um, I don't think I necessarily had an off day, I think, honestly, I just, just couldn't, couldn't pedal my bike fast enough at altitude like that, um, I mean, yeah. normally for an XCO or something like that, I can fake it at high altitude, um, apparently I cannot fake it for four plus hours, at ten and a half thousand feet. Not all of it was at ten thousand feet, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I was racing, but I didn't quite feel like I was racing. And I, yeah, I mean, when we hit that first climb, I just watched the front group of God knows how many, 30 people, 40 people right away from me, and that was that. Yeah, I knew I just had to pace myself so I didn't die, and climbed up that first 4,200 feet, bombed down, got with the group, ripped it up the second climb, caught a few people on the way home, nobody else caught me the rest of the race, and yeah, 42nd. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I put in a lot of work for this one. I'm, just, I'm fitter than I've ever been. So I'm definitely pretty damn disappointed to have this be the result. Um, but I guess I, guess I should have gone and bought an L210 or lived at a high elevation for a month to get ready for this. Yeah, I mean, quite honestly, yeah, that was the only other thing. Only stone left unturned would have been really making sure I was acclimated. Um, but I think there are definitely other guys out there who weren't acclimated who did well, so it's hard to say. Um, so, yeah, definitely my first foray into this deep end of the gravel scene here in the U.S. And, yeah, definitely fast, no doubt about that. Um, I don't think it was necessarily not fun, but I'm definitely not pleased with the result. So, definitely, definitely going to have to do some more big gravel events before I... Uh, gravel pro. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make sure I like it or can at least stand it a little more. 
Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, definitely was a tough call choosing this over my bike nationals, but my rationale being I need to expand my gravel resume a little bit, and this is where the sponsorship and the scene is going. Um, and I can't just be completely idealistic about being only a cross racer or only a mountain biker. Like, that's not how you make a living in this sport at this day and age. And yes, I'm driving, but I'm in Idaho and I haven't had a turn in 150 miles and I haven't seen a car in an hour. So I do not think this is unsafe. I could drive with my feet right now if I wanted to. So, this is gorgeous. Fun trip. Good to gain some experience, see lots of friends, camp, van life, etc., etc. As you saw plenty of, mostly van life stuff. It's a van life vlog, oh as I gosh, said. Gosh, I think my next race is over to shore in August. I am gonna go ride my bike a ton, do some bike packing, do a ton of volume for fun, explore Montana, and do some stupid cool trail runs and climb mountains and glacier. So, uh, Keep an eye out for my bike check on my mog.